But for me, I was in it. I was in it. This was, this was an obsession. I was eating it, breathing it, sleeping it. I, on my waking hours, I was thinking about it. Um, and so I wanted to take this. And I didn't know where I was going to go with it. I didn't know about a business aspect of it at that point or what. All I knew is was this was a really cool thing to do. I met a bunch of really cool people. Welcome to the Pitmasters Podcast. I'm Rusty Monson. I'm Anthony Luan. And today on the podcast, we have Lene Oxley Loop of Sugar's Barbecue out of Portland, Oregon, or thereabouts. And we talked to her about all of her rubs and spices and what's going on on the West Coast and Pitmasters and Chopped and all the stuff that she's doing. So let's go. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we, again, you can find us on all the social medias just by going to the pitmasterspodcast.com and you can find out everything you need to know there. Listen to the podcast, subscribe, buy some cool corn hats. Yeah. I haven't brought that up in a while, so I thought I might. <laughs> They're coming to concert, by the way. I know. <laughs> Faith No More. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm a huge Faith No More fan, actually. So, <laughs> Rusty, this week I posted a picture of me outside the barbecue pit stop. Right. Going in on a mission. I need two rubs. Mm-hmm. I walked in there, got my two rubs, and guess what happened? You bought seven. Bought a bunch of accessory stuff. <laughs> I failed. I failed my mission. It's just almost impossible to go into barbecue pit stop and so not pick our teammate up. Jared from Salt City Barbecue, Jared Swift, actually is the, became just became the manager of that store. Ah, and uh, he was texting me, "Do you need like what else do you need?" I'm like, "Dude, you go in for two pot, bar- barbecue pit stop for what you need." And you come out with what you thought you knew. You know? <laughs> and then you, it sits there and <laughs> you forget that you have the tool. It's crazy. Or whatever. Yeah. Nobody should go into a barbecue shop. It's bad, dude. Like you should like leave your wallet at mm-hmm. home and like bring your $20 bill. Do it. If it's a 14 bottle, that's a, that's a great idea. If it's a $14 dollar bottle of rub, bring in 16 bucks to cover taxes. And yeah. That's it. We're not, we can't do anything. You'll find ways. <laughs> yeah. You'll be like a crack addict going, can I, can I just put my card number in? I'll Venmo I, you. <laughs> 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 to take checks <laughs> let me go to the bank i'll be right back <laughs> but yeah man um not much going on this week i just cooked up a whole bunch of stuff um made those that sausage oh yes it, it looked amazing yeah that that guy sent for us um uh it was great it was they were good they're just traditional black bratwurst so it was good right. did a brisket um trying out a couple things with briskets i'm trying to hone my the like the the uh trimming of the brisket right i'm trying to really get that you know because um i don't know it's sometimes i just feel like i just don't do a good job of it i'm not as consistent as i should be so been working right. on that a lot uh i just home just salt and pepper just texas style stuff and so whatever but i do have a freezer full of two full hogs that i'm going to go through so nice that's what i'm doing my goal now yeah. is just so if you ever follow us on instagram you're going to see a whole lot of pork yeah, a lot. So, nice. are they locally raised? Yeah, buddy, mine Chad Raw, uh, Rollins has a farm out out close. Nice. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah. So every year he hits me up. My grandpa owns a Piedmontese cattle, so we get Piedmontese cattle and that. So this year, I hope my goal for this, whoever's listening in Utah, is I've always wanted to get a bunch of barbecue folks together that are friends of ours on Instagram and just yeah. barbecue people and do like a whole hog cook. You know, just oh, I'm down. Hang dude. out. You know, and drink. I, drink water yeah. you know because <laughs> i can't drink alcohol yeah. anymore but uh well, you know drink water and hang out and just have this like cool little barbecue social you know yeah. after you and cook a whole hog so well i've cooked one have you yes and it was very successful it, it was awesome dude it turned out really well and it was a learning curve and i didn't know where i made new mistakes nobody else knew except for me i'm like oh man you know mm-hmm. but i i definitely can put my input on that part. Perfect. Cause I just was going to dig a pit, you know, do the whole cinder block thing. So yeah, like, like packing the ribs with sausage. I want to do that because my ribs, they were just w- way overdone. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. just little stuff like that, that I guess you learn when you cook, like, Oh, I seen it on the video that you're supposed to do that, but I'll be fine. Right. No, it's fact. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited about that. We're also doing a couple of SCA things. We're actually having a practice cook at my house. We're inviting a bunch of the SCA cooks from Utah. Um, just so you guys know from Utah, we take on our website, the pitmasterspodcast.com. You can go there and sign up for basically anything. If we see it, we, we have it on there so you can sign up. So if you want to go to Utah barbecue company, snake river farms class, it's on there. 
If you want to go to the SEA judge judging class, it's on there. The KCBS judging, if you want to sign up for the KCBS judging, it's on there. And Jesse said he only has a few seats left, so you've got to jump on that. Right. So if you want to just kind of one-stop shop on the pitmasterspodcast.com, we have every single contest judging thing that's in Utah up now to sign up for. And you can just sign up, click the button, and it takes you right to the place you need to go. Yep, yep. And now I guess we have we should intro our sweet guest here. Yeah, I'm a huge fan yeah. of the next guest. Lene, uh, I found I saw her on Pitmasters and I don't know what it was. They're just like kind of like, oh, since she won. I was like, dude, this girl's yeah. gonna take the whole thing. She came back on All Stars. I actually yeah. kind of followed her career uh, through Chop, through all that stuff, anything she, uh, you know, did. So I was just very, I don't know. I just followed her. She, right. she kind of like, I just was, I was like a fan, you know, yeah. I was like a fan of Lene's. Yeah. And so we finally got on the podcast, which to me is really cool. Yeah. And we were able to talk to her for a while. And she's just a wealth of knowledge and she's super fun to talk to. Dude, like, <laughs> she can talk forever and ever about barbecue like mm-hmm. so much knowledge just falling out every <laughs> sentence you know it's amazing rusty actually talked to her for three hours total before yeah. we even hit her on the it was great on, on the podcast and just knowledge all over the and place I was like, it's awesome to Lene Oxley. yeah <laughs> <laughs> on the phone <laughs> yeah. crazy yeah so as you guys know i get fanboy boyish and i yeah. was at that moment so it was really cool <laughs> to hang out with her and and get to know her a lot better and yeah Hopefully see her in Coeur d'Alene, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Yes. that uh, she's one of the four pit masters up there in that event in April, I believe it is. May. May. Yep. Yeah. There's an event up there that they have a bunch. It's a cool little fetch guys to check out. She's one of the pit masters there. Yeah. So we're probably going to head up there. At least I am. Um, and kind of we might cover that. So you golf? Hell no. I was going to say, cause they have the world's only floating green up there. They I'll move, go look at it. They move the green back and forth. Like, oh, cool. <laughs> floating <laughs> green. <laughs> You you don't get excited over that like I do, but whatever. I don't golf. I'd rather spend my days cooking a brisket. Like you could do both. I, it's just because I suck. <laughs> I really suck at it. Yeah. And whenever I go golfing, when I was in the restaurant world, all my you know co managers and stuff, they're yeah. like, "We love go golfing." So oh, I was like, what? "I better get into golfing because I want to schmooze and I want to like grow in this restaurant." So in the management part of it, so I tried to learn. And it was just a horrible experience. I just, I never got good. I basically would try and hit the ball, do my thing. And I'd look back and there's like four groups of people waiting for me. <laughs> so I'm like, F this. Oh man. Some of the biggest deals are made on the golf course. So you might want to learn. Like they're, the better ones and the bigger ones are made over a brisket and a beer, which I yeah, can't drink. True. So a brisket beer and a water. There you go. <laughs> Extra water. Lots of water. Cool guys. Perfect. Well, let's just get on with it and get to the, uh, to the interview guys and uh, enjoy. All right, guys, we got Lene Oxley Loop here. She's got 35 years of professional culinary experience. Uh, she's been barbecuing for the long, long time. She's you see her on Pitmasters. You can see her on Chopped. You can see her on Barbecue Brawl. You can go to her class. You can do all this stuff. And she's just got her hands wrapped completely around the barbecue world in every way. So, Lene, say hello. Hey, how you doing, guys? Yeah, I'm a busy woman, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right. So tell us how you got there. I mean, wh- where did that all start? Boy, where do I start? Um, you know, I think to a certain, I, I think it really all started from my culinary background and playing around in kitchens and kind of cutting my teeth at an early age and learning the culinary trade, learning how to cook from different chefs and growing up in the kitchen, evolving honing my skill, um, eventually getting kitchens of my own, places to run myself. And uh, in 2006, um, I was, uh, I had a neighbor of mine in a, a house that I had purchased. I had a neighbor that was uh, had this big offset barbecue pit, and he was playing on that, and I was going to work early one morning, had a couple extra minutes, and I pulled over, and I introduced myself as a new neighbor, and was really intrigued by this barbecue pit. This guy was larger than life, kind of just really kind of well-mannered, kind of, kind of laughing and you know, having a good time. And a dude, laid back kind of guy. And um, he invited me to a competition, told me he competed and invited me to, to a competition. And I, uh, I, uh, I, I joined him in the competition and I was cleaning the pits and I was cleaning dishes and running boxes and I was hooked. And that's kind of how my barbecue life started. Nice. 
So, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little winded there. Sorry. But so, so you, you were just hooked right out the gate. We're, I'm just curious. Usually when people get hooked, was there a call involved at that barbecue competition? No, it, no, and not on my end. I mean, I was just sort of helping him out. Right. Now, mind you, I, here I am. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a trained culinary professional. I'm a chef at that point, and right. so I know how to cook and I understand food and I understand. I may not have understood live fire cooking, but I did a lot of grill work on the line at restaurants over the years. But certainly nothing like competition barbecue and what's right. involved with that and. So, I mean, you know, backyard type of barbecue, but nothing to the extent and uh, disciplined um, nature of competition barbecue. And so, you know, here I am looking at what this guy's doing and he's, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know what, I can, I can cook a brisket better than this guy can (laughs) and I could cook chicken better than this guy. And that's what was, that's what the, that's what the fire was all about to me. I mean, that it wasn't about a call. Uh, it was off to the races. So I started, you know, getting tables and a canopy and trying to piecemeal like, you know, cookers together. And, you know, you don't just use one, you use several and, um, you know, and all the costs involved and that sort of thing. And, and it was, I mean, I was just off to the races and I was hooked. So it was really about looking what other people were doing and telling myself that I could do better than that. Did you, you ever compete against him? Better than Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah! In the leader contest, I, oh, I beat pants off guy. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> but it doesn't. But it doesn't matter. I mean, the, the 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 thing was, he got me interested in it, and then I went on to get other people interested in it, awesome. and um, and that was early on, two thousand six, two thousand. That was the summer two thousand six, and that was kind of, I think that was sort of the beginning of really this trajectory that competition barbecue just took off after that, and then you know, by the time two thousand you know, eight, nine rolled around. I mean, it was like, it was just this thing that was this, this movement that was taking shape all over the the nation. And you started seeing it on television and the, you know, documentaries. And of course, Pitmasters had started. And uh, I think, I think maybe, I don't know, maybe Pitmasters started a little bit later than that, but um, it, it became super interested, interesting to a lot of people. And I think with Pitmasters, I think it really started this, huge interest in competition barbecue. Right. Well, you know, well talking about the TV shows, you've been on a few yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you actually competed yeah. in the finals with one of our local girls here, Susie Bullock in one of the TV shows, barbecue brawl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she yeah. we, we, we she talk- is awesome. Yeah. Susie, is, Susie is amazing. Uh, she is incredible. Right. Uh, don't ever under- underestimate her talent. Uh, and I certainly didn't. Um, you know, uh, with that show, we, none of us knew who she was. I and mean, she, we're all comp- competitive barbecuers. We all knew each other from the circuit or whatever. We competed against one another and, you know, over, over the years. And here she comes and we're like, who the heck is this? <laughs> and she just systematically started beating the pants off everybody. She's very, very good. She's great on camera, really well presented uh, her craft. And uh, clearly, concisely, and really had a knack for that. And um, people just ate her up, and she cooked really well too. And so, um, you know, the judges really loved her food, and she she took it all the way to the end. I mean, she did against Leanne, and she did a great hog. I mean, I wish I was there to see it. Um, we were there, but we just couldn't see the we just couldn't see them, you know, compete. Right. Uh, we just we you know we saw them when they were done. so let's go there then so you started out on pit masters how did that come about like when how does one get on pit well it's over now but back then how did that how'd that go like did you just get a call out of the blue or okay so yeah so with pit masters um you know, Pitmasters has, Pitmasters had been on for a couple of seasons before i got on there i was on in season five and then again in season seven, that was the last season, the All Star. And so I had been watching Pitmasters, and uh, they, you know, season one. John Marcus is the was the executive producer, brilliant guy, amazing vision. Uh, what he did for the world of competitive barbecuing, single handedly, was an incredible. I mean, I think he really put that show really put competitive barbecuing in in everyone's living room. 
and in their hands. And a lot of people said, oh my God, I can do this. I mean, we've got a little money. Let's, let's go down to the next contest down the street and let's go throw some ribs on a girl and see if we can win something. And then people did that. But as far as my place in there, um, you know, I did, they had called me and, you know, I was, I was really knee deep in barbecue. I was neck deep in barbecue at that point, in competitive barbecue. I ate it. I slept it. I breathed it. I, I mean, every, I just had my day job, but every other waking moment was spent cooking and honing my skills and learning and reading and asking people and, you know, trying to get better at cooking ribs and brisket and chicken and pork butt. So, um, they had approached me a while ago, a while before I was actually on it. And I didn't feel that I was good enough to be on a television show because for me, it, I, I want, I didn't want to be looked on as a buffoon as like, just, you know, cause reality TV has a knack for doing that. And I just wanted to be able to like, be able to hold my own and be confident enough with my abilities, maybe have some grand championship titles under my belt, uh, which I did at the time that I was on it. And so I was like, all right, cool. I earned my keep. I earned my medal. I can hold, I can hold my own against these people. I'm not intimidated by this. I know my skill level. I can cook anything on anything against anybody. I know my flavor profiles. I know my, you know, where I need to be. And uh, I was able to do it. And so they called me again and I, I agreed. And at that point, you had to sort of audition. You have to send in uh, like a three minute to five minute little recorded you know, skit, so to speak, of you and whoever your pit partner was at the time. And uh, my friend Corey, who was on a competing team uh, in this area, in the Pacific Northwest Barbecue Association, uh, joined me and we made this like little three minute, five minute. We did it actually it was like five minutes with two minutes of, of bloopers. And we sent that in. It was on a filmed on an iPad and we sent it in. And, um, 10 days later, they called, called us up and they, they asked us if we wanted to be on TV. And that was like the, the coolest thing in the world. And uh, we were off to the races. And that was a challenge. That was a crazy, crazy trip, man, because you drove all the way out to where they were filming. They said, okay, you need to be in Kansas and, you know, Osage City, Kansas at this date. And because we're going to be filming. And then, you know, we, we expected, honestly, we expected to be one and done. We expected to be to have the crap beat out of us and then we were going home the next day and we won and yeah, yeah. they're like okay in three weeks you're going to be in you know illinois and uh it, you know uh outside of chicago at a big festival big barbecue festival and we're going to do this again in the semifinals and we won again against these top teams these teams were winning all kinds of stuff uh one of them won the american royal and we beat them and here we are, two women from Portland, Oregon. Where the hell is Portland, Oregon? They don't know anything about barbecue. <laughs> They're not Kansas City. They're not Texas. They're not, you know, they don't know anything. And here we are just beating these people like again and again and again. And that's and, the funny part is uh, because I, I've watched that and I was literally, that's when you guys, when you showed up on, on camera, I remember it. And they said, or, you know, Portland, the West coast or whatever they put on there. And I'm like, do they even barbecue there? Like at, at <laughs> yeah, first yeah. I was like, Oh yeah. wow. Okay. Let's see what the way they're going to cook. Like, but like fish. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> and so, and then you guys yeah. just started crushing and I was like, Oh man. And then you became like that. You were like, I, like I, I've still told you before. I kind of got a fanboy about it. I was like, Oh yeah. Let me, let's watch. That's why I was watching. I was super like pumped about you guys killing it down there and killing those people. Yeah. And it was funny. It was like, oh, I guess people from Portland King, that's, there's grills out there. Okay. Yeah. It was just weird to me. You know what? There are a lot of good teams out here. There, I mean, it's not, people are, they ask me, periodically, well, not anymore, but they used to ask me when I was on the circuit. They're like, well, what is, what is Northwest barbecue? Like, what is that? And mm -hmm. it is it all like, you know, raspberries and blackberries and salmon. And <laughs> I'm like, no, no, it's not. <laughs> it, you know, it, 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 it's its own thing. It, it, it takes from different disciplines of barbecue all around the country and it just creates its own, like we're not, we're not trying to be any specific genre of barbecue. We just like to barbecue and you, you know, you use local wood for smoking and cooking. And so you have that flavor profile. Hickory doesn't grow out of here. So you're using cherry, you're using oak, maple, um, fruit wood, you know, that sort of thing. Alder. 
Uh, and, oh, yeah. um, I mean, there's, there's a, you know, if you even go north of, of where I'm at to Canada, uh, the, the Canadians can barbecue like you have not. I mean, it's, it blows your pants off. It is so hot there. A barbecue is so huge there. And these people are really, they're super involved with barbecue, like traditional American style barbecue. Um, and, uh, so I would compete in, in, in uh, Vancouver, BC periodically and the surrounding areas of Vancouver. And dude, I did well. My first grand champion, uh, title I did in Langley, BC. And, uh, it was amazing. I had to go outside of the country to win. <laughs> I couldn't, <laughs> you know, um, but it, but it was, and it, it, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, we were, we can cook out here, you know, and I think people know about it now. But at the mm-hmm. time, people are like, you know, because when you see the same old, same old teams from Kansas City, because it gets a lot of notoriety. I mean, Iowa, you know, Missouri area, um, you know, St. Louis, obviously the South, you know, that really takes Chicago. That really takes a lot of the, you know, the populace. I mean, it just definitely takes the takes the uh, attention span. Uh, away from other areas of the country that really know how to barbecue. Especially and, back uh, then, because it I was mean, really heavy in those yeah. areas and, and Portland yeah. wasn't talked yeah. about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, when you have, when you have big contests like the American Royal, uh, you know, like the Jack Daniels, the cost, you have a huge contest like that. And you know, really well known, you know, Houston Rodeo, um, Livestock Rodeo. I mean, that's a gigantic contest that pull teams from all over, but they're centralized in places like, you know, like, like Kansas City. I love Kansas City style barbecue. I think it's a wonderful barbecue. It's great. And, um, and, uh, you know, that gets a lot of attention, but people tend to forget on the outer lying areas that, you know, in the Dakotas, people know how to barbecue. Montana is great barbecue in Montana. Yeah, there's a so, big one up there. No, it's more homogenized. It's more, it's everywhere. It's, I mean, you can find barbecue, good barbecue yeah. everywhere now. Right. But going back to Pinmaster, so you got on there and just kind of yeah. started just tearing ass. Really? Like you got on there, you went all the way to the, oh. The finals, right? And yeah, the first so, time. Yeah, so one of the things about Pitmasters, um, and, you know, you the only thing you didn't bring was the meat. And, like, I mean, you brought everything else. So you brought your cooker. You brought all your seasonings. You brought all your utensils. Uh, you were just a traveling roadshow. Um, the only thing that you couldn't bring was any protein at all. And so, um, here I am going back to, I'm pulling from my culinary roots, right? So I'm going, okay, um, here's the, the approach that I had going into pit master was I, I watched previous shows and I said, okay, here's the deal. I said, I want to make sure that whatever they give us, we can cook it. And if they give us lamb, we can cook it. If they give us, uh, you know, lamb chops, lamb ribs, uh, you know, hind quarter, you know, shank, whatever, we can cook it. If they give us any kind of poultry, pheasant, quail, partridge, duck, goose, chicken, et cetera, et cetera, we can cook it. We have the injections, we have the, the, the rubs, the combinations, et cetera. It broke down the entire cow, whatever part. I mean, so we were basically we were armed at a T with a pantry that had so many different kinds of rubs and seasonings, injections, marinades, uh, sauces, finished glazes, butters. I mean, we had an entire supermarket with us. <laughs> so when we came in, I mean, we were already, I had the culinary skill. I knew times and temperatures. I knew how the, the you know, I was working on a Lang uh, reverse offset flow pit at, at that point. Uh, with uh, with Lang and uh, amazing pit, lots of room to spread out, uh, whether we're cooking hog or several types of meat at a time or whatever. So we had lots of room um, and, uh, you know, works in all kinds of different weather, easy to use, et cetera, et cetera. Didn't work hard electricity. It was just one stop. You know, it was, it was, it was, a, it was an amazing pit. And so we, I went there, we went there completely, 100% entrenched with, with everything that we could possibly have that we could cook anything that they gave us. So we were very, very prepared and we were not worried about our competition. We didn't care about where we were or who we were pe- competing against. We were eyes on the prize. And, um, to the point where it's like you, you pour your heart in there. I mean, you're, it's, it's, it's a hard, it's very, it's very challenging for me. 
I had, I was up against a bit, I was challenged because not only am I from the Northwest and nobody knows how to cook out here, right? And <laughs> mm-hmm. at the time, secondly, I'm a woman in this field of largely male dominated cook. Mm-hmm. So I had that challenge going for me. And also I was competing against myself because I'm my worst, hardest critic. And, um, so I was, and of course, you know, Corey was with me at the time and she was an amazing cook and we definitely shared a lot of, you know, ideas and, you know, she helped tremendously. I didn't do it alone. And so, you know, going, going through the motions of, you know, okay, here's is now you have ribs and you have brisket and you have whatever we're cooking. Uh, and then you're like off to the races. So then you're doing it. And I'm not worried about what my team, but the other teams are doing. I'm worried about what I'm doing. I'm worried about the clock. I'm worried about where my pit is, where the temps are, how much wood I've got, what I'm using for flavor, what we're going to use. I mean, we had rubs from Big Papa Smokers. We had rubs from Heath Riles. We had rubs from, you know, um, back, then, back then he was Victory Lane. And we had rubs from Malcolm. And we had rubs from, you know, with, with Killer Hogs. We had rubs local stuff, our own stuff. I mean, we had we had so many different kinds of, rubs and, and combinations and uh, sauces and glazes that we could we could customize our flavor profile with who the judges were at the time with what their expectations of flavors were going to be and um and you pour your heart and soul into that and you are you are just like you become the barbecue and is you can't see anything you just everything blurs <laughs> and you completely immerse, uh, immerse yourself into what you're doing. Right. And um, you take it all the way to the finals. I mean, every single time, okay, we're, you know, you won. You won it. I was like, holy crap, this is for real. This is like, we got something. You know what I mean? And took it all the way to the finals in 2015. And uh, 2013, season five. And we went up against David Basta and and um, and Rod Gray, Pellet Envy. Both amazing cooks. I mean, I'm going, holy crap, these guys are like top of the top in the country. Here we are, you know, two women from freaking Portland <laughs> and here we are. And we, we won handily to beat that, to, to be there. We didn't, there was no cheating. There was no, no setup. There was nothing. And we earned it. We earned that spot to beat it. And, um, and we had hog, you know, and that hog, that was the first, competition hog I'd ever cooked in my life. I mean, I took hogs prior to that, but not in front of Myron Mixon and Melissa Cookston. Oh yeah. And Mo Kason. Right. And, Melissa and I was Cookson's like, holy like crap, I'm cooking a hog. Right. I'm They're co- both the best uh, in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I'm cooking hogs for arguably two of the top hog cooks in the country mm-hmm. at the time. And I'm like, holy crap. And, but it was just another day of barbecue. And when it was all said and done, there was a couple of fatal errors that we had made that, you know, and we came in, we came in second overall, which, which that's not, I mean, we didn't get the money, you know what I mean? But that yeah. was in, in the letdown from that. I mean, that, that, I, that, I, that beat me up for, for a couple, it, it really, that was a hard, hard pill to swallow for at least two months after that show. And, um, you know, and the thing about those shows is like, you know, they get filmed, and they don't get aired for like two months after that. You can't say anything to anybody oh, no. about it, <laughs> you know? And that was, that really was hard. So then I went back to the season seven, the all-stars. I got invited back because that was a runner up. Did the exact same thing. I had a new pit partner, um, my friend Steve from uh, Florida, amazing cook from Florida. Um, different energy, really enthusiastic about what was going on. Just a great guy. And I did it again. We did it again. We went all the way to the finals again. I beat these guys in Texas in brisket in their own backyard Mm. and, and then took it all the way. And it was just the two of us. It was Jamie Gear, and myself, his team and my team. And we were cooking hogs and it was April in Austin, Texas. And it was 28 degrees outside. It was, everything was freezing. Garnishes were freezing on the table. I mean, everything was, it, 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 it was so cold. And we were doing these brick pits, so we weren't using our pits. We were using these cinder block pits. I'd never cooked on a cinder block pit before in my life. And um, we turned it on the best food that we possibly could, and he won. Uh, I'm the only team to make it to the finals twice. Yeah. Nobody yeah. can say that, you know? Yeah. Uh, 
And I'm proud of that. I mean, it was, it was, it didn't mean that it wasn't, that the, the, the loss was, it wasn't crushing. It was, I mean, I was like, damn it, you know? It's so, funny. Cause when you look back so, yeah. at it now, like back looking back then, when you're watching it live, I, I didn't really know who these people are. You hear about Jambo pits, you know, you hear all that stuff, but now looking yeah. back on it, that was an insane group of cooks. Yeah. You know, uh, like you look uh, back, unbelievable. Like, dang that. Wow. That's, that's just the best of the best. Really? You know, I mean, they really got yeah. the best cooks on that show. They really did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they had, you know, they had it in, in, they had it in groups of three. So they, you know, we only, we didn't go against everybody, but we, we went up against the, you know, people, it was just all bracketed, you know, they, um, but the people that we went up against, I mean, we went up against, you know, Rub Bagby. I mean, Swamp Boys, arguably, arguably one of the top cooks consistently in Florida for years. Uh, Shigan and Grennan, who won the Royal. Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys beat the pants off of 500 other teams to win the Royal, uh, or I don't know if it was the invitation or the open, but anyway, they won the Royal. Um, Ernest Cervantes, arguably one of the best brisket cooks in the, in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, Junior Urias, one of the other best brisket cooks in Texas. Um, you know, Ten Bones Barbecue, amazing Southern pork cooking, you know, mofos. I mean, those guys were great cooks and so on and so forth. And systematically just taking these guys down, taking these guys down, edging them out, taking them down. Yeah. It was, and, that was um, awesome watching. It was really cool. Yeah, like I said, like for the first episode, I was like, Oh man, she's legit. You know? And so it was fun to watch <laughs> yeah. that whole process. Full one full. of the, yeah. One of the side, one of the side categories was salmon. It was really funny. We all, everybody laughed when, <laughs> when uh, they pulled the, they had a table and they had this big, pan on this table and they had it was full of ice and they and they had a big blanket over it that was a, one of the sidewinder challenges you know in the middle of your regular cooking they're like okay you guys aren't going to get off that easy we're gonna you know we're gonna give you another sidewinder here we go you know you have two hours to cook or 30 minutes to cook this or whatever and they um pulled it back and they revealed salmon and i was like okay yeah this this is like a no-brainer and it, it was really funny because at the time both teams looked over at me and they're like, they're like, they're looking at me that, you know, going, oh yeah, okay. She's from the Northwest. Obviously she knows how to cook this. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I played that fish in 10 seconds and got it on the fire. And it was, it was That's like awesome. a 30 minute challenge or something. Right. It was very, very fast. And, um, and of course I won that, you know, I did a teriyaki check. I, I cooked salmon belly cause that's like super ultra beautiful and it's fatty and it's moist and you can't, I mean, it's really hard to screw salmon belly up and um, that was the best part of the salmon because you don't really dry it out and it takes really well to teriyaki sauce and they they it, you know it, it won. but going to the back to the finals it was a one bite rib challenge i was the, it was a one bite rib challenge against rod gray and david <laughs> bosco two of the best rib cooks in the country at that mm-hmm. point and I was like, hold, and we won. I was like, oh my God. And the slabs of ribs they gave us were shit. They were awful. Oh. They were terrible. They looked like somebody was, they used a bandsaw. Like they used, they were, they were, they had like blinders on and they used a bandsaw. <laughs> they were yeah. cut diagonal. They were awful. And we picked, we had like four, it was a three rib. We had to turn in three ribs. We had literally four ribs to turn in. And the, the, that was it. The rest of them were not, I mean, of like the three slabs we got. And we're like, we're getting punked here, man. This is like, this is like, we're totally getting punked. And, um, they started eating Raj rib and they, he undercooked it. And I was, I, yeah. I watched Myron eat Rod's rib and pull. And you're focusing on his mouth. You're focusing on him eating that rib. And he was pulling it. And I'm like, oh my God, that's undercooked. Then they went to David's and David's was undercooked. And I'm like, ours was definitely not undercooked. It was perfect. And they bit, they ate mine, and they, and we won the, we won that challenge. Heck I was yeah. just like, nice. holy crap, we could, we could take this. You know, here we are. Yeah. So anyway, I have a, I have a like behind the scenes question about that the show. Yeah. What do you eat? Do they, do they feed you? Huh? <laughs> do they feed you? Because you're cooking all night long in some of the, some of those you know, competitions. Are they bringing they, you guys food? Um, Cause like at our competition, we're, like, we're uh, running to McDonald's real quick. <laughs> no, they didn't. Um, not in that one. Uh, chops feeds you. 
Okay. But uh, even if you're there long enough, you know, you'll get fed. They have catering, you know, they, it's, it's all contracted stuff. They have right. catering um, every day and uh, barbecue ball fed us. And, but uh, pitmasters, I'm trying to remember if they did or not. I don't think it was, you no, know, no, we brought our own food and we, when you're running so much on adrenaline, you're not even thinking about eating. Like we would, honestly, it was just all about coffee. I didn't care about eating. I wanted just hot coffee. You know, I needed to stay awake. I needed like caffeine. I needed stimulants. Um, I don't know. So that's just, that's just a I fat guy. Me, like, at one point, I gotta eat. <laughs> yeah. At one point, I mean, at, at one point, like they left, they left us. Like they packed up and left us and we were cooking overnight and there was no cameras. There was no nothing. Oh, we man. were just cooking. And then they would come in back at five in the morning for a call and these guys would start setting up the lights and we'd still be there cooking. So, I mean, we would just like jet off and we'd go to Sonic or whatever and go get some, go get some, something to eat, you know, but I wasn't really interested in eating. I was interested in winning. That's what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And if I had a little nibble of something leftover meat or something like that, that we ate, then that was perfect. That was all I cared about, you know, or apples or something like that. But for me, it was this or go to McDonald's or something and could get breakfast, you know, because they're 24 hours. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I just, I, I've always wondered that because you're cooking yeah. a whole hog. That's not just like a few hour cook. That's an all night thing, but they do throw the challenges. That's an all nighter. Yeah, but I'm like, yeah, that was, those were like 150, 160, 70 pound hogs. Those were big hogs. At least, you know, that's a pretty sizable hog. But so you can't just like, you know, I cook 48 pound, 50 pound hogs. That's, that's like six hours. That's no big deal. Six, eight hours. These guys were like, you know, 13 hour cook. You know, these hogs are so big. Wow. Yeah. So, oh. what about chopped? Like, yeah. <laughs> so then you yeah. go on chopped. How does that work? Like, you go from pitmasters and then they just call you for chopped, which is a whole real different ball game. Well, but yeah, that, that didn't. I mean, that didn't happen until later. Um, you know, chopped was awesome. Uh, chopped is a lot of fun. I encourage everybody to go on chopped. Um, it's a hard game. It's harder than it looks. Uh, the thirty minutes is really thirty minutes. The twenty minutes is really twenty minutes. Um. If you cut your arm off, the time doesn't stop. Uh, they, those judges are professional chefs. Some of them are iron chefs. Uh, they know their food. You can't fake it with those guys. They will catch it. Um, you've got to turn in good stuff. And you need to do it. And you need to use all the box ingredients. You can't just like use one box ingredient and not do anything with it and put it on a plate. You'll get, you'll get, you'll get sent home. You've got to manipulate it. You have to, you know, it, so there's, there's, there's a mental aspect. You need to know what you're doing to get in that game, to, to stay in that game. You need to know to how, to, how to cook to get all the way to at least to the dessert round. The hardest part of that entire cook is the, is the appetizer round because you're new in the kitchen. You're nervous. You don't know where things are. I mean, they give you a culinary tour a little bit, like before you, when you get on set, it's early in the morning. You've been up since probably three. And um, to get ready to be down, at the studio at, at five. And, um, and so they give you a, the, the culinary team gives you a tour of the pantry. You get a chance to see all the canned stuff, all the bulk products that they have, all the spices, all the dairy, all the freezer stuff, where the pots or pans are, where the racks are, where the deep fryer is, where all the molecular gastronomy stuff is. Cause they've got that too. The, how the ice cream machine works. You know, they give you a really good comprehensive tour. They'll answer any questions. So you get a chance to really kind of poke around to see what, what's where. You know, where's the couscous? Where's the, where are the canned garbanzo beans? Like, where's the puff pastry sheets? Where's the olive oil? You know, how, what's the temperature of the oven? You know, what's the, what's the setting? I mean, where's the flour? Where's the sugar? Where's the chocolate nibs? You know, things like that. You're constantly kind of looking at. Like, because you want to get a mental note of where things are because, you don't want to spend time going around that kitchen looking for stuff because it's time is of the essence. Right. So then you, um, yeah. And then you, you, you get acclimated to what's going on. So if you can get to the dessert round or to to the appetizer round, at least then you're warmed up. But to get on that show, you know, they, they kind of seek you out. Um, they have casting calls and you apply and they have, you know, one casting, um, filter and then they have another one and then then you know they either pick you or they don't right i like how you and, um, they look at your they, 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 they you know they, they look at your background and you know for this particular contest for this particular chop i was part of the it was the gold medal games because they were they were 
airing it in conjunction with the, the Olympics at that point. They couldn't say Olympics. They couldn't say Olympia. They couldn't <laughs> use the word Olympics, but, they, but gold medal games they could use. So it was a gold medal games. It was a tournament style, um, four part with a, with a fifth part being the grand finale. So the winner of each show, four parts would go head to head in the grand finale, winner take all 50 grand. And that's a big, that's a big chunk of money. Um, and, um, so they'd have the baking round. They'd have the grilling round. They kept calling it barbecue. I said, stop calling it barbecue. It's not barbecue. It's grilling. It's not even grilling. <laughs> there you go. It's just, it was pans. It was like these, like, you know, cast iron pans that they stuck on top of a stove. I mean, that's not even grilling. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's pan frying with lines. I kept educating those guys. It had grill marks um, in it. <laughs> it had grill marks in it. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, uh, and then they had a speed round and then they had, um, I forget the other one that they had, but anyway, uh, so they had all these different, these different, uh, rounds and then the, the, the winners went head to head and I won the grilling, uh, contest and, um, so I'm a top champion and I love that. And then I took it to the finals and went all the way to the dessert round and lost the dessert round. And then they had a redemption show, so they brought me back, you know, runners up. And a different contest, different big contest, and then made it all the way to the dessert round, and I lost again. <laughs> so I was like, "All right, that's it. I'm done with this crap. I keep <laughs> making it to the final. I don't win these things." So I was like, "All right, um, I love this. It's a lot of fun." But uh, and then Barbecue Brawl called me up, and I was like, "Okay, let me think about it." <laughs> was Was Barbecue Brawl like right after Chop? Was that just like a boom boom? No, 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 no. It was no. It, it was last year, the year before. I forget what it was, but it was. Um, no, it was, it was, uh, it kind of, yeah, I, just, I, I guess it did kind of happen right after it because it was all like one year after another, after yeah. another. Um, so yeah, they call you up in January and they talk to you about it a little bit and, or February and it's, everything is really quick. Okay. We're going to be, we need this done right away. And you know, we need all your paperwork done tomorrow, you know, and yeah. you're starting, you know what I mean? And then you don't hear from them for like two weeks and then they finally call you and, and you're then- like, okay. Barbecue Brawl was a new show that's recently premiered yeah. on Food Network a few months back. Yeah, Barbecue Brawl is, uh, barbecue brawl is uh, that was a lot of fun. Barbecue yeah. Brawl was amazing because, you know, these guys are really sworn to secret. They're not really telling you about the show, but I'm like quizzing these guys. I'm like, what's the show about? What's going on? Like, what is this? Is it a money game? Is it like, what are you doing? Is it like a regurgitated, <laughs> you know, barbecue show that you see a lot? Because I wasn't really that interested. I didn't want to do a regurgitated show. And they're like, no, this is kind of, and then eventually they kind of, I kind of got it out of them that they told me kind of the premise of the show. And I said, oh, dude, I've already signed an NDA. I'm not going to talk, talk to anybody about it. You can tell me what's going on. And um, so they finally kind of told me a little bit what's going on. Like Bobby Slay was in it and Dunk Michael Simon was in it. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And so it kind of ended up being sort of a, a cross between Pitmasters and Chop. I mean, it was this kind of new show. And it was a, it, it was a fun show to do. And again, I got back on it. Um, but here I was approaching it, you know, I've done chop, so I've done that aspect, which was a lot of fun because it took me out of that barbecue aspect of food shows. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it allowed me to flex some culinary muscle that I love doing. And, um, to show people that I knew how to do more things than just barbecue. Uh, you know, and, because I'm a trained chef. And um, so this was a combination of a lot of those things. It was a combination of things I did on chop, a little bit more fine tuned cooking, and then the live fire aspect of barbecue pit masters. And it was like the perfect combination. And I had a blast. It was hard. There were long days. We were in Austin, Texas. And uh, maybe the weather was like really super cold and windy one day and then really hot the next and then really super cold and windy and rainy the next day. And we were in mud and then we were getting blown to, blown away and then we were in mud again and it was just crazy. And um, and it was a ton of fun. And I got a chance to see some people that I hadn't seen in a long time. Right, that so was I, a heavy cast. I loved to death. That was a heavy cast. Right? Yeah, it was, you know, yeah. It, yeah. Carrie, Carrie Pringle, who's amazing, Peg Lake Porker in Nashville. I mean, Tuffy, if I ever yeah. know Tuffy. Right. And, uh, you know, Leanne Whippin. I mean, she's awesome. Which Chicks Barbecue right. back in the day and she's in Florida now and... um. Kevin Bledsoe, who owns uh, a few restaurants in Texas, um, and um, uh, Joe Pierce from Slaps in Kansas City. 
Yep. Uh, and Phil, Phil Johnson from Top House Barbecue in, in Arizona and Phoenix. Yep. You know, these guys are, they, they know what they're doing, man. And, and then me, you know, and, and I felt good. I felt, I, and then Susie, <laughs> uh, you know, Susie <laughs> Bullock from, uh, you know, from Lee, how you Lee, Lee, how you how you you, she was telling us too, is like, yeah. she got there and it seemed like everyone knew each other. And she was like, hi. <laughs> she didn't know what nobody, well, she knew who you guys were, but she no. was, she was, a, she was adorable. I mean, she had, it was so much fun. And okay. people were, cause we're all looking at each other and going, who in God's green earth is this woman that sits here? <laughs> like, we're all like, okay. <laughs> and, you know, we're just trying to compare notes a little bit and uh, doing what we can to kind of research her a little bit. And, you know, and she was a great coach. She's amazing. Absolutely incredible. The queen She's of uh, Dr. Pepper Jerky. Camera and, <laughs> Huh? She's the queen of Dr. Pepper Jerky. <laughs> yeah. I got to look that up, as a matter of fact. I have to look up Dr. Pepper Jerky. Yeah. Now I'm intrigued. I haven't made jerky in a long time. I want to make some jerky. Me neither. I just thought about that. Maybe yeah. I should do that. Right. So, so that yeah. show was a little, that was, that show was a little, that yeah. was cool because yeah. the premise is, if okay, if I remember right, because I have the worst memory of all time, so bear with me and correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so Michael Simon and Bobby Flay cook off and then they get to choose their team. If that, right. That That's how, how it started. started. Right. Yep, and then they get a cook off, and then they get certain benefits the, the for their advantage, team. Yeah, the advantages for their teams. Yep. So there was yep. a point in there. Can I ask you about this? And I've always wondered it. I don't know if that's a phrase. Wondered it, but I wondered it. <laughs> so either way, it happened. Um, Bobby Flay cooks a chicken in like it was, it was it was Simon cooks a chicken in like fifteen minutes a whole yep. chicken. Did that? Did he yep. really cook the whole thing? So here's first of all to get. The, to get the access and the privilege to be 10 feet away from these guys and watch them cook was immense. Um, you know, we were, they were cooking in their respective booths. These guys are both iron chefs. They're both masters of what they do. They're great guys. They're friendly. They're approachable. They're knowledgeable. Um, and to, to watch these guys, it, 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 you're just in awe. I mean, I've seen a lot of top chefs in my, in my time, but not like these guys. And um, watching these guys do what they do. Uh, one of the challenges was a chicken. They got a whole chicken, like just regular old, you know, fire chicken. They had 45 minutes to cook this chicken. And I'm like, 45 minutes. Um, and they both cooked the chicken. They both parted it out. They seasoned it up you know, with their, their seasonings. You know, Michael Simon is Cleveland. He's got, you know, kind of Eastern European family. He likes pickles and mustard seeds and he likes, you know, coriander. He looks, he uses coriander in like everything. And, uh, and Bobby Flay is like, you know, New York y, California y, you know, bright flavors and, you know, kind of very colorful, bright things that you wouldn't necessarily, you know, look at maybe going together, but they work. And, you know, he'll take his spin on a version of something. And uh, anyway, so they cooked this chicken and they seasoned it up and they cooked it. And they, they both, they cooked it all in 45 minutes. And I was blown away. I was like, this is crazy. This is awesome. Because if you think about it, it's 45 minute time. That's not means that they're not cooking it 45 minutes. They're cooking it probably by the time they're done processing it, marinating it, you know, seasoning it. They got 30 minutes to cook this chicken. 35 minutes max and they did it. And I was, I was just blown away. It's cool. Cause you guys can it. see you guys in the background yeah. and you guys are talking and it's a, it's a thing. It's, yeah. it's a really cool concept yeah. show. I really liked it. It was really fun. Well, we were, yeah, we were watching it. So we were just in awe and they're like, Hey, you know, ask these guys questions, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, and then we would all sort of ask them questions. And it was, it was kind of funny because, and here I am, I'm a chef. I'm studying what these guys are doing. I am studying every the way they're moving i'm studying how they're using the pits i'm studying because i i'm not i don't my, my may not ever get this chance to be this close to these guys again and, and see what they do um you know it, it, it's just incredible the opportunity to to be able to be there and then we got a chance to try some of their food and i, I was just blown away they're very very good amazing cooks one of the contests that they had was uh, they had to cook um they had to do like their version of like a, a pork sandwich like a pulled pork oh, yes. Carolina style sandwich of course you know it's all about you know Big Bob Gibson from South Alabama and 
you know, and they're, they're what, like 45 minutes to cook this thing mm-hmm. or less. And they had to come up with something that resembled a pork sandwich in that length of time. And they both did it. And Michael Simon took pork jowl and bacon and pork chops and cooked different aspects of the, of the pork, you know, of the pig on the grill, charred them up, got them seasoned up, chopped them up, made an, made an incredible vinegar sauce to go on it, made a, 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 a coleslaw. Um, and we got a chance to eat some of that food and it was just incredible. Wow. Uh, you know, he even took a step further. He's like the guanciale that it, that they had, it had a skin on it, it had a rind on it. He took it and put it in the deep fryer to make crack ones out of it. Mm. So he could chop it up and mix it with the, with the, um, with the final product. Mm. Was it pulled up? Was it chopped up fine yet? What? Dang. Um, I just Bobby ate it. Like made like an open, <laughs> yeah, it, oh, it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible because he put his spin on it. Right. You know, he used his corianders and his, and his different flavors that he had. And I think, I think some of the judges were just blown away because they didn't know what to expect. You know, this was a first, this was a first season show. Nobody knew kind of knew how it was going to be. And we were like, okay, what's our part in this whole thing? You know, here we have Bobby Flay and Michael Simon. These guys are like top chef. Who the hell are we? Are we like supporting cast members? Like what, what are, <laughs> and then they were talking about like teams and mentorship and it, we're, kind of, we're like, okay, I don't, we don't know kind of how this is going to going to run and what the final product is going to be. But I mean, at the end of the day, we're just like, you know what? They tell us to cook pork ribs, we're going to cook pork ribs. If we tell us to cook beef steaks, we're going to do that. And however they intertwine Bobby and Michael into what we're doing, they're just going to do that. And we're just going to play along. That so cut, kind of cutting of that was brutal. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I think what, if I remember right, two people went each show. Yeah. And Tuffy yeah. Stone was like the yeah. first. I'm yeah. Like, what? <laughs> no, no, actually, no, Kevin, Kevin went, yeah. I, I think I forget who <clears throat> went first. Like Kevin kind of got next first. Um, I forget who, uh, and Joe, he, he, he went home first. Oh, and Joe. Um, right. And then the next one was Tuffy and, yeah, t- you know, it's really funny because when Tuffy got sent home, I was like, um, yeah, I can hear all the TV sets in the country clicking off right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, this guy's won the Jack. He's won both Royal competitions. He's won just about everything you could possibly win in barbecue. Uh, and he's getting sent home because there's some sort of pork chop issue. I'm right. like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. This is, people are going to be like, you know what? F this. This is screwed up. I hate the show. You know, they don't know what, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. We talked to Tuffy in a past episode and I forgot to mention that. I should have mentioned it. Right. I should have. I missed that opportunity. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) But that was like, I I love, I love Tuffy and it was amazing cooking next to him. And he's just such a cool guy. He's such a level headed dude. I mean, if you stress out, you don't see it. You know, Mm -hmm. he's just always, he always puts a good, good demeanor on and you know, he's just a fun guy. Uh, Everybody is. Right, is just su- we, it was a lot of fun. He's super humble too. You know what I mean? He's like, yes. he's like, I shouldn't oh, yeah. be here. Like, yes, you should. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. He's that type of person. Well, it's funny because he was there, and the first thing everyone was like, "Oh, is he judging?" And he's like, "No, I'm competing." I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "You that this is weird." <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that was a crazy one, though. Man, I remember watching that. We yeah. we would watch it every week. And it was great, man. It was a good show. It was a really, really good one. I liked that. I'm, and I heard yeah. the rumors that it is coming back. So yeah, I googled that season two is getting ready to do yeah. something. So that's gonna be cool for everyone. Yeah, to watch. They, yeah, they're bringing it back, bringing it back, which is great because I think it's a it's a great show. It's it's new. It's refreshing. I mean, I don't know how they're gonna yeah. they're gonna spin it off if it's gonna be the same show just in a different location or same. Look, I don't know what that's gonna happen. I have nothing to do with that. But um, but it's great because it showcases. It gives some people especially with people like Susie that don't really get like a TV appearance. I mean, she's all over Instagram, huge Instagram star. Um, great at what she's doing, but it gives her kind of a, a you know, a, a chance to get up in front of a camera on a network, you know, big network. Right. And, um, and I'm, I'm really happy that, I mean, I would have loved to win that show, but I'm really happy Leanne did it because she's come, she's like me, she's come so close. For so long, mm-hmm. and she gets sent home, and then finally she does it. And she's yeah. she's an awesome. I love her to death. She's great. Another uh, amazing woman in barbecue who I look up to. Um, her and Danielle, and I mean, there's so many others, and Melissa, so many other women in barbecue that I look up to. And 
that have just earned their keep to be there. You know, they've right. earned their, they've, they've got their stripes. It was crazy. They like, to yeah. be with, with all that firepower there, I'd sell my house to be a judge. You know? <laughs> I just feel like I want to yeah. eat all of their food. Like everyone that's the there. The food was good. Yeah. I mean, all the food was good. The food, nobody turned in bad food. I mean, then they knew that. I remember it was top caliber shops, uh, top caliber barbecuers. Nobody turned in bad food. It was just whose was better. You know, who hit the mark better. So let's you know? flip this a they little were, bit. They were, yeah. they were pulling at straws to try yeah. to come up with something right. that they didn't like about somebody's food. Yeah, you, you know the, the judging. It the was judging, off color. What, <laughs> right. what we saw, you know, the judging we saw on TV, it was it was ten seconds. I mean, it was nothing. And they, we were in that. It was behind this big house, and we were on a porch, and they had the the judging set up, or the, the, the where they actually aired it. The judging set up back there was a lot of room, and they had us all lined up and facing the judges, and they would get a couple of little bites of the food and judge it, and. um they, uh, it, it was several minutes for each, each contestant, um, to hear what, and it was like a back and forth dialogue between what we were trying to do and, and how I would explain what I was cooking and the back and forth. And none of that got presented. Hardly any of that got presented on the air, the final product. Mm. And I mean, we saw it just the same as the rest of the shows. I mean, I saw it the same as time as everybody else saw it. I mean, when it was aired, I didn't get a sneak preview. Um, so it was interesting how they had it all chopped up, you know? So, so so I know for a fact that I wouldn't be able to handle that kind of scenario. I just don't have the training, but you do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, yeah, Yeah, I mean, not to the level of these guys. Yeah, but not at all, but I wouldn't be able to do stuff on the fly. You know what? You know, much learning though. I mean, if you got an opportunity to do that though, right? you, I mean, it was like with, with me, I understand that. Like, cause me and Pitmaster, when they would come after me early on and they say, Hey, we really, we've, we've been watching you. We know that you're really good at what you're doing, yeah. but I'm like, yeah, I'm not ready yet. I'm not confident enough to put myself in front of television to try to, you know, and, and I, and when I finally was confident enough, then, then I pulled the trigger and I was able to do it. I'd be like, they pull but, out lamb. I'd be like, let me Google this just to time and temp real quick, just to get a yeah. baseline. <laughs> <laughs> like lamb. Yeah. Is that the same as sheep? Lamb. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> is it in the horse family oh my god you guys are hilarious yeah. you guys are funny I'd be all confused google they take my phone so away let's, let's take it back before all these shows and you're doing competition cooking um what did that yeah. look like being from the pacific northwest because we're in utah i think we have the same dilemma there are no competitions here at all and if you want to get competing you're going to have to drive 10 hours x 10 yeah. hours z and 10 hours y all right you know yeah so right. what was that like You're when right. you were doing it in the Pacific Northwest? Well, I think I think at the time there were a lot more content. I mean, it's, okay, first of all, the season is short, right? I mean, it, you know, it goes from pretty much April. If you're lucky, there'd be an April contest, and it would go all the way to September. <clears throat> and uh, and that's it. Uh, and there's only a finite amount of weekends uh, involved with those months. And... Um, you're really hoping to, if you really want to get better at this barbecue game, you want to, you want to go to every single one that you possibly can. So if you're, if there's one in Montana, that's the only one you're driving all the way to Montana or you're going to Southern Oregon or you're going to Vancouver, BC, or you're going to Seattle uh, and all points in between and, uh, Idaho. Um, and so that's what I was trying to do. Uh, trying to work full time and try to get time off and switch my schedule around so that I could get to these contests to try to, because people are like, how, how do you get better at doing this? You've got to compete and you have to compete. You can't just pull up at one contest, think you're going to do really well. And then, you know, and then that's it. One and done. Unless that's your goal. But for me, I was in it. I was in it. This was, this was an obsession. I was eating it, breathing it, sleeping it. I, on my waking hours, I was thinking about it. Um, and so I wanted to take this and I didn't know where I was going to go with it. I didn't know about a business aspect of it at that point or what. All I knew is, was this was a really cool thing to do. I met a bunch of really cool people. This was a challenge uh, because there's a, there's the, there's the competition aspect of it. But there's also the, 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 the person, like the people that you meet, the people you hang out with um, and you, gain friendships from that uh all over the country and it's awesome 
Great. Uh, social aspect of it. So I'm waiting for so that's what I did. So I, I, I tried to go to every contest that I possibly could to compete and it's expensive and you try to hone your skills and try to figure it out. It's like a, it's like a, this, uh, you know, uh, this challenge every single weekend. Okay. What are the judges going to like this time? And it was really funny because there's only, you know, so many teams out here at the time. And to a certain extent, we're all following each other around and competing against each other every weekend. <laughs> That's you what know? it's like here. We yeah. literally, we literally right. go with the same teams all the time. You yeah. know, we would kind of yeah. tag each other along like, all right, where are you guys going? We'll go too. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. So that's what we were, that's what I was doing. And each weekend I would learn something and, you know, maybe solve some barbecue samples, try to get some gas money home and, <laughs> you know, and then you, you get a call and then you get another call and then you do well and it gives you encouragement to get to the next contest. Mm-hmm. So I would get home. Uh, the contests here are largely Saturday, Sundays. So they're not the Friday, Saturday at the time they're Saturday, Sunday. So you get home Saturday, Sunday evening and you'd unpack your, truck, trailer, landscape trailer, you know, van, whatever it is. And you start cleaning all your temples and you clean everything and start buying your meat for the next contest. And you're ready to go. And by Wednesday, your, your injections are made and everything is done and you're off and running. You're ready to go for the next contest. Right. And, um, Sometimes that's I, just how, wanna, that's how I, did it. I just want to move to the Midwest, you know, just so I can be like, I'm going to go to a contest a mile this way. And then tomorrow I'm going to go to one, <laughs> two miles that way. And right. oh, there's one in my front yard. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you, you go, you go to those places and you know, you, any, any place you throw a stone in any direction, you'll hit a contest. I mean, and you don't have to drive, but I mean, there were contests, you know, out here, there were contests that were happening in California. And if you wanted to go down and compete in California, just to see where your stuff was landing. You know, um, you know, maybe you're, 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 you're killing it, you're killing it out here. You're winning every contest or coming in top, top five, every single contest. And it's good to get to see what's going on in Nevada. It's good to go down to California just to see kind of where your food's landing. You know, yeah. that's how you kind of learn. It's true. You I know? need to figure out Arizona. Constantly... I don't know what it is. Arizona. Yeah. Man. Cool. man, I've been. Yeah, I think Arizona, I think Arizona is, uh, yeah, the people that, and I went down to, uh, to, um, to like have a soup a couple times. And that was a, an awesome contest, big contest, a lot of fun, you know, different environment, you know, and yeah, man, I mean, that's, that was, that's a hard nut to crack that contest, you know, mm-hmm. back in the day. And, uh, but it was a lot of fun. I've been waiting for the Pacific yeah. Northwest barbecue association to do a contest in Spokane. I lived in Spokane for three years. I mean, oh. I've just been wanting, been waiting for him to, do an event there so it gives me a reason to go up there and see my friends and do a competition. I have a couple up there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, where I've, been, I've been looking for yeah, them. There's the, none up there in Spokane. I'm talking about yeah, in Spokane. The, the, the Maybe even in Spokane to Spokane. the right person. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh-huh. They would. So for three years or four years in a row, they had a contest at, in Yakima. And that was probably the closest to Spokane. Right. Um, there was the Yakima and that was a huge one. That was a $10,000 grand prize. That was like the wow. biggest, that was the richest one out here continuously. Uh, I was sponsored by treetop and it pulled a ton of people. Like every team was there because of that grand champion, you know, that, that huge prize money. I won reserve one year and it was 5,000 bucks. Wow. But between the other wins that I, I mean, I, we walked with like eight grand that day and wow. it was like, wow, this is like, that was the most money I ever won in barbecue in my life at that point. Yeah. I've been to Tri Cities uh, a couple times. It's not the best place to visit. There, I shouldn't say that. There's not no, a lot to visit there. There's not a lot. There's boat racing. No, it, it, but it was, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we, yeah, you just, you're there for the contest and right. you, that's it, you know. Yeah. Um, the Pacific Northwest Barbecue, you know, KCBS is out here and they do a lot of, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's about, it's a, there's a, there's a lot of content. I mean, there's there's a, a good number of contests. I mean, they're spread out. They're in Washington. They're in Oregon, um, Montana. There was a there was a contest I used to go to in Stevensville, Montana, um, the Bitterroot Valley, and beautiful, right. gorgeous drive all the way out there. I mean, that is just amazing, amazing views out there, and to compete, you know, in that it, it's just right. incredible. And I've been there once. We used to go to Boise. Um, there was a Boise music festival out there and we said they had a organizers would put together a contest out there that we'd have in conjunction with the Boise music festival out there. And that was a lot of fun. And, 
Um, so I traveled like a lot with barbecue, you know, went to Kansas city a couple of times just to see, um, ended up at the Jack and the Royal, you know, I got, I got a, a good amount of traveling and a good amount of cooking and I had fun with it. But at that, you know, and, and when the shows started to happen and, you know, I, I, I did, it was, it was great. I mean, I got a little bit of a name and recognition for sugars and that was great. And, but I sort of kind of got tired of trying to chase these, these awards and try to feed judges all this amazing food. Right. And, uh, you know, and I kind of lost, I just, I did what I wanted to do with it. And especially after pit masters, after the, the, the um, the all stars and pit masters, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm just kind of done with this. This is, this is a business now, you know, mm-hmm. and it kind of morphed into that. So let's talk about that for a second. Right. So you now, like you do catering mostly, you have your uh-huh. own seasonings, you have your own sauces, and that's kind of what you're doing now. So tell us about uh, yeah. some of those seasons and sauces you got. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I, Sugars is full-on business. Uh, we do private events and catering. We have barbecue classes that I teach, and we also have a line of products, some uh, barbecue rubs and sauces. Um, the or sauces, I've got two right now with one more on the way. I've got a mustard-based sauce. I've got a sweet red sauce. Um, both very well liked. They're both clean label. Um, lots, lots of like clean ingredients. I mean, really, really good, uh, high end ingredients that go into these, um, sauces. So they're not the cheap high fructose corn syrup type sauces. These are, these are very chef driven sauces, but they're really enjoyed by a lot of people, not overly sweet. Um, and, uh, they have a really good balance of flavors. The rubs are, um, the rubs are sort of springboarded from rubs that I would use in contests. And, uh, I've got um, I've got four out with uh, several more on the way coming up in the next couple of months, and um, I've got a, a, a serious bowl which is like very very kind of garlic, pepper, onion heavy, really good on beef, really good on like red meat, heavy meat. I've got my like, clucking awesome, which is my poultry seasoning, which is really good on. How did that name not get taken? Of, that is the best freaking name for a rub for chicken. Rub. Yeah, um, actually, <laughs> yeah, um, my wife came up with that name, and I'm so proud of her for doing that. Um, she, I take no responsibility for that name at all, and she said clucking awesome, and I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. So we that put is that on the, label. the best. And, when I saw that. I was like, right. uh, oh, man. and that is a that is a great rub. Very uh, citric heavy, uh, citrus citrus heavy with herbs and. It's great on a lot of different kinds of meats. Really amazing on steak. Really, really good on pork chops. Um, great at potato salad. I mean, it's, it's a lot of sort of universal. Again, these are very chef-driven formula, formulas and recipes that can span a lot of different different food groups and different cooking mediums. I like the uh, packaging. Good on popcorn. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. There's no cartoon um, and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And then we have the Lincoln Holler. And the Lincoln Holler is uh, brown sugar mixed with some seasoning, some herbs. And it's, uh, so I'm pulling a little bit from that Memphis kind of flavor profile, but I'm making it my own. Um, you know, and it's, it's a wonderful balance of seasonings and great on popcorn, great on corn on the cob, awesome on pork chops, shrimp, um, you know, steaks. I mean, it, it does a lot of things, um, for, it's great in like deviled eggs, for instance. Um, great with pork belly. I mean, it, it, it's really, really a wonderful, well balanced. You know, it's not just all a bunch of salt with some garlic and paprika. You know, it's not somebody else's rub that I took and added more cumin to it and then called it my own. I mean, these are all completely 100% original, my own formulas that I came up with. And um, they've done really well. I mean, our sales have been going crazy. We sell them online at my website. Uh, we just picked another distributorship in the region. So we've got two distributors now that are distributing them all over the place. Uh, the traction's really good with sales and um, they just continue to, to go. And um, and I'm proud of it. I'm proud of, of of having, you know, my brand in people's pantries and their refrigerators in their hands. You know, that was the whole goal. Um, you surely don't get rich doing this. Uh, but, you know, and, and somebody asked me, it's like, well, you go on, you know, you go in the grocery store and there's, a, you know, there's 30 different barbecue sauces on the shelf or more. You know, why why are you getting into this game? And for me, it was just, it was really about this natural progression of wanting to, to expand and, and it's my brand to different markets and make it, not everybody wants to hire me for a catering. Not everybody wants to take a barbecue class, but it's easy to sell somebody a barbecue sauce or a seasoning rub. 
that they can use. Mm -hmm. So they get a little bit of the flavor of your flavor of your signature brand, your signature flavor is in, they're using that in their crock pot or their Instapot or their barbecue or their, you know, they're dipping their chicken strips in there. And that's perfect. That's, that's all I could want. That's perfect for me. Yep. So, uh, so that's where I'm at right now uh, with the, with the seasoning. And uh, I got uh, lots of ideas for, for different stuff that I'm doing R and D on right now and coming up with, and you know, there's more to, more to come. So this is, I'm not done with this yet. Nice. So you did bring up classes. I, we see that you have seven coming up from between March and August and yeah. actually I should say six because one is already sold out. I know. I got the waiting list for one. sold one. out already. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the April 19th class um, is sold out that, uh, and the 23rd, the August, August 23rd is almost sold out. Um, the other ones, there's plenty of spaces available. And I, I like and, your themes um, on these too. Let's talk about that a little yeah. too. So I've been teaching barbecue classes for a while now, and I love teaching barbecue classes. I love teaching people and dispelling myths and breaking old habits and um, enlightening somebody and inspiring somebody to approach the grill in a different way or approach buying a piece of meat in a different way and not being afraid to tackle that piece of meat, whether it's a brisket or pork butt or you know, ribeye or a tri-tip or whatever it is. And it doesn't matter what they're cooking on. I don't care if they're on a pellet grill. I don't care if they're on a, on a high end grill. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It, 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 the, the methodologies and the technique is the same. And so, you know, for a while I was teaching a little competition classes and I had a lot of fun with them. They were really intense. There were lots and lots of information uh, but I didn't, they were fun, but I kind of kind of got out of that and I wanted to teach, I wanted to open up and become more involved with backyard barbecuers, like those that had no interest or maybe even a partial interest in competition, but they really wanted to just get better at bar- cooking their ribs. Like my ribs are always drying out. How, why, how do you become a better at cooking ribs? Or I've never done a brisket. How do you do a brisket? It's like a big expensive piece of meat. How do you do this? So that's where the interest was um, because the competition world is a very closed, finite world. Um, and it's at, at some point, it's just you've trained everybody, you've taught everybody. So, and they're off doing their own thing and I didn't want to be part of that anymore. So uh, I opened it up to these back, back, backyard barbecuers and it's been off to the races ever since. And so... I um, started out doing kind of almost the same sort of class several times a season, uh, a season meaning the summer. And um, I would do the four meats. I'd do, you know, ribs and brisket and chicken and pork. And then I'd add a couple of things, maybe make a sauce, maybe make a rub, maybe do a dessert if I had time. And it would be kind of an all-day class. It would be like a really long class, be like eight hours. And it would be really affordable. And um, I wanted to give people really a good, a good value for their money. I wanted them to leave with full bellies. I wanted them to have a good experience and with a lot of knowledge. And I um, was doing that for a while. And uh, you know, each season that would come by, I kind of like more, you know, kind of like reinvent the class a little bit and kind of change some things, maybe not make it as long, maybe not do, try to do 10 different meets and, uh, and that sort of thing. So fast forward onto the season coming up, we really kind of took a look at the classes and wanted to change out the classes a little bit. We wanted to revamp them and make them really interesting. Um, and I wanted to showcase some appetizers. I want to do some side dishes. I want to do some meat. Uh, really focus on seasonal specific ideas and genres of food and holidays, like with Cinco de Mayo. And with Father's Day and with, you know, Easter and, and then really capitalize on some of those things that are very, you know, intrinsically, you know, known and, you know, accompanying those holidays. And so uh, that's what I started to do. And now I'm really excited for these classes. And so, and none of the classes are the same. They're all different classes. So I have people going, I can't figure out what class to take. And I'm like, that's exactly Same thing, right? what I, I was wanted. looking at that. That's like, what we were doing. So yeah. it's like, I want you to show me the meat. Yep. Oh, yeah. wait, show me Game the meat. Hands. Yeah. <laughs> no, like literally for our listeners, like May 31st class is show me the meat. She's going to teach you ribeye, tri-tip, Texas style 
beef shoulder, which I'm super interested in, and pork steaks. That's just one class. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> plus, plus, there's other stuff. We're doing. I'm going to do other things, but it's very ambitious, guys. Uh, this is going to be super yeah. ambitious. Uh, you know, I don't want to just do. Everybody's got their own style of classes. Some people will do 30 different things in four hours. It's rapid fire. Bang, 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 bang. That's cool. That's their style. And I love it. It's great for me. I want to make sure that I, I don't want to gloss over something because maybe somebody is the, the only reason they're taking my class is because they suck at brisket. They want to get better brisket. They, they don't care about any other meat, but they want that brisket portion of the class. I don't want to glaze over that. That's been really important to that one or two people first, the, the people that are there. And or more, uh, we max out at 30 people. We generally sell out each time. And, um, I have a blast. I mean, it's a lot of work on their, uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm there chatting away the entire time. Uh, and it's demonstration. Some people, sometimes I'll pull some people up to pull back the ribs or, you know, maybe wrap some shrimp with bacon or something like that. Do something that's just a little bit, you know, get them involved with it, but it's largely spectator. And, uh, they're going to see me cook things sometimes start to finish if there's time and then they're going to eat, they're going to eat and they're going to eat. Uh, and, uh, they're going to take some food with them. And more importantly, they're going to take some knowledge with them. And I'm going to tell them where I buy the meat and how, what to look for. And I'm going to tell them how to prep it. And I'm going to talk about fuel and I'm going to talk about wood and I'm going to talk about different cookers. I've got 10 different cookers that I'm cooking on. I've got pellets. I've got direct charcoal fire cookers. I've got professional cookers. I've got kettles. Um, I got rotisseries. I've got, you know, I've got a lot of different ways that I can show people how to cook. Um, the only thing I don't have out here is a gas grill. Uh, and I thought about getting a gas grill because some people have used gas grills. I got no problem with that. I want to show you how to get the best product that you can using some techniques and paying attention to temperature and, you know, and, I have a lot of fun teaching these people and I've had, we've been very lucky because we've, we've been, we've had on a number of occasions, people come class after class after class. These same people show up every single class hmm. where it's like, we want to give them like this all access pass, like That's this rusty. annual pass, you know, so they can just keep on, they can come out to any class that we, hmm. that we teach. And they've been such good fans of ours and because they love what we're doing and we inspire them. And that is, I couldn't ask for anything more than that. Yeah, I have a class yeah. in a book addiction. I'm sorry, I do. Yeah, it's it's true. I would be that guy. If he had an all access pass. <laughs> if I lived there, I'd be like, uh, yeah, I'm going to all those. I'm going yeah. to access pass. <laughs> yeah. And so you know, this year coming, this year uh, we really wanted to do something a little different. We wanted to have something that was that we, you know, I didn't want to do brisket at every single class. I didn't want to do chicken at every single class. I wanted to do like we've got the in, in, in uh, August 23rd. We've got our southern and south barbecue. I really want to. I want to focus on pork. I want to throw brisket on there a little bit, but I want to start with some chicken. I want to do some pork. I want to do some southern sides, some southern appetizers, and um, and maybe more. Uh, you know, if I can throw a dessert in there. Um, with Father's Day, I want it to be about steaks, and I want it to be about you know meat. Uh, I want to do you know with my with uh, I just again I it, I love cooking tri tip. I love cooking brisket. I love cooking you know, burgers and things of that nature and, and just changing it up. You know, a lot of people like to pork, you know, pork belly burn ends. I mean, everybody in the barbecue world knows about this, but not in the backyard barbecue world. So whole different, these guys don't know that much about in the competition circuit or where everybody in the competition circuit is like, this stuff is all old school at this point. We're moving on. But these, to these guys, mm-hmm. they're just getting wind of it. They're like, oh my God, pork belly burn ends. Holy crap. That's amazing. Right. You know? <laughs> um, so, and, you know, for me, it's like, a, for me, I, I don't want to cook on $200 brisket. I want these people, these guys aren't going to go out that barely know how to cook a brisket and go spend. Right. You want to go on a Sam's Club and Costco brisket, you know, briskets, you know right? or Walmart brisket. Walmart. It's brisket. Costco, yeah. man. Costco, all, yeah, there's no, there's no Sam's Club out here. So there's this Costco all the way. You know what right. I mean? Costco, cash and carry. You know, I want people to be able to, you know, spend 30, 40, 50 bucks on brisket or whatever. It's not going to kill them right. to, to buy it and be able to have something to eat for several days, you know, and be confident that they can approach. And I've had a lot of people email me after the class, a lot of wives of guys that are taking the class that goes, <laughs> and just thanks me because their food has gotten a lot better. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, Lene, thank you so much because Dave's food is outstanding now. Thank you. He learned some stuff. <laughs> 
That was funny, well spent. I appreciate it. Speak. So, where can people so, find oh this class? God, write a review. <laughs> <Yeah>. where, <laughs> can, where can they find your classes? At where can they go to do their little research on your classes? And stuff? Yeah. So uh, you can find me a couple different places. You can find me on uh, my website, of course, sugarsbbq dot com. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at sugarsbbq. Uh, you can find me on the Facebooks at uh, Sugars Barbecue as well. And so, um, so I'm available. There's no TikTok. Uh, I do have a, I, I do have a Twitter, but I don't tweet. Um, and, uh, I just, I don't see the point of it at this point in time, but I, I know there's people yelling at me to get on it, but, um, I, I just, I'm slow. I, it took me forever to get on Instagram and I finally got on Instagram and I think it's a really cool resource actually. Yeah. Um, Social media is nice. Yeah. The pictures. For sure. Yeah, it's cool. I love to, I love to, yeah, it's just, you know, um, I, I love, uh, you know, I don't cook as much as I, I mean, I love cooking. I cook largely, you know, I'm business wise cook. Um, and, uh, sometimes it's raining sideways out here and it's cold and I just don't feel like getting out in there. And even though it's undercover, I just don't feel like getting cold. So I cook inside. There you go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, uh, but I like throwing things on the grill as well. So I just got this brand new, uh, hasty bake grill. Uh, as you guys know about Hasty Bake, uh, direct charcoal fired grill out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, all hand built, American made, uh, stainless steel. These things are awesome. Never cooked on one in my lifetime, and I got my hands on one. And um, these things were built in the 40s. I mean, old school. And this thing is rock solid. I love this cooker. It's amazing. Uh, if you haven't gotten your hands on one, I please try one out. They're crazy good. And I know that some of those guys in the steak and the SDA are using them for their steaks. You know, it's all PK this and PK grilled PK. Mm -hmm. Their PKs are awesome, but there's a lot of people using those, those tasty bakes and for the cooking their steaks, man. And and they're great little grill. Nice. It looks like it has uh, sort of like the, what are the, the Santa Monica style adjusters for your charcoal too? Yeah. yeah, It's Santa Maria. It's Santa Maria. Maria, Yeah. A little bit north of Santa Monica. Yeah. Um, (laughs) The, uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, it, so it's got the, so it has the same type of cooking aspect of a Santa Maria gaucho y style grill where the, you can separate the, the charcoal from, or the wood source, you know, the heat source from the meat itself. So instead of the meat moving up and down, the charcoal goes, goes up and down. And, uh, so you can, you can, I mean, there's a good 18, 20 inches of space between where the charcoal is and, where your meat lies on the, on the deck on the grill itself, or you can get that charcoal right up against the grill and you can sear the crap out of anything you're cooking. So you can, or, uh, it, you know, in, in all spots in between. And it's a wonderful cooking. Meat. It's great. It's a lot of fun. I love getting new cookers because it, it enhances my, my knowledge base with cooking. And, um, I've got two big old hickory pits that I use, a DW old hickory pits that I use. Uh, and I love them. They do a lot of heavy lifting. I can load those up with four or 500 pounds of meat and just let them rock. And they're wonderful pits. And I don't care what temperature it is outside. Those needles don't move. And, um, I've got some green mountain grill pellet cookers that I use, some Jim Bowie's that I use that are amazing cookers. Um, I got my trusty old school Weber kettle that doesn't ever let me down. Everybody needs a Weber kettle, you know, and, uh, because you can't screw those things up. Um, and I've got this Rectech Wildside Grill, this Santa Maria style grill uh, that's got a double rotisserie on it, which is just badass. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I love all the grills I have. It sounds like you need you a know? drum. Can, <laughs> yeah, you know what? I do. That's what, you know, there's two, two cookers I do not own. One is a, an egg of some sort, uh, you know, Kamado style ceramic, which I'd love to get. I've cooked on them before, but I don't own one. And a drum. I've cooked on drums before, and drums are killer. That's what uh, Rusty I know cooks why on. people swear. What? That's what What's Rusty that? cooks oh, on. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a drum cooker. Yeah. yeah. Salt City drum smokers. They've, uh, and, uh, they've, yeah. gotten, they've gotten really technical. I would love to get, you know, a Hunsaker uh, gateway drums. I mean, those drums are just, they're super cherry red, and they've got the valves on them, and they've got, they're all sort of, lamborghini out. I mean, those things are badass. Those are really great. I had an R&O pit for a while, kind of like a Jambo clone, like a J3. Um, and um, that was a lot of fun to cook on. It was great. It was all insulated, crazy, beautiful, cherry red. I mean, it had decals all over. I mean, it was just gorgeous, like a race car. 
and Chrome's back on it. I mean, that thing was just <laughs> balls out amazing. Nice. Uh, that thing loved 300 degrees. <laughs> and it was rock solid. A great competition pit. But when I retired from competition, I that thing was just sitting in my backyard and sitting there. And I felt it needed love. It needed to be worked. I needed to be cooked on. And I was getting these big catering gigs and I could only fit just so many briskets on those things. So it was really, it's not meant for catering. It's meant for a competition. It's perfect for competition. And um, so I, I, I sold it and moved into the world of Old Hickory. And it's been, Old Hickory has been great for, for catering. Nice. Chrome, so chrome and, and fire all over your pits. Right. Like your yeah. pits tearing ass across the yeah. lawn or something. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I know, Ricky Bobby flying through your yard. <laughs> 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 you need a... Yeah. <laughs> You need to look at the Salt City drum smokers as well, too. They're right up there with Gateway and everybody else. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah. They oh, they, cool okay, functions. cool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Cool. Yeah, pass my name along. Have them call me up, man, because right. I'd love to talk to them about that. I'd love to, get a, I'd love to get a drum. I think it'd be cool. I mean, there's a lot of people making good drums out there. And you know, the technology on how to cook on one of those has not changed. I mean, that's old school, hanging meat. I mean, that's Chinese. Mm-hmm. They've been doing that forever. Yeah. Right. Um, the, go to any Chinese restaurant. That's worth its weight in salt, and they have a cooker back there, and it's they're hanging up hogs, and they're, you know, roasting half hogs, uh, Chinese style roasted pork. It's amazing, and they're doing ribs, and they're hanging them up. It's like, you know, um, uh, John Willingham. I don't know if you guys know who that is. Willingham Barbecue. I do actually. Uh, I, I bought his book just recently. Okay, this guy uh, passed away a number of years back. Uh, revolutionary with what he was doing, and he was big in the Memphis scene and won a ton of awards back in the day. This was like way back in the day uh, for barbecue. And he was, he did a pellet. He had this pellet cook. He made this pellet cook. And part of this pellet cook had, a, it was this bizarre looking thing that looked like it came out of Carnival. It looked almost like a big popcorn machine. Um, and part of it was involved hanging all his ribs and his brisket up. And of course, Memphis is pork. So it was all these ribs and he'd have this little carousel and he'd hang these ribs up and it would be a pellet fired cooker. And he invented this thing. This is like, he made this. Thing. And people are, you look at this, you're like, Oh my God, what the hell is this thing? And it cooked these ribs like perfectly. And that was before drums, like UDS, like ugly drums. And people are just taking big barrels and making barbecues out of them vertically. And this guy was doing, and this was like early, 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 early on. And this guy was, it was just amazing. Yeah, um, called it like the Wham Cooker, like cooker huh? Yeah. yeah. Wham. Yeah, he, he just cooked a lot of, yeah, a lot, yeah, a lot of rings. And he had this like, technology, he had a little window in there, you could see what was going on, and crazy, crazy stuff. Um, I took one of his classes and it was just incredible. Oh, cool. I mean, the amount, the amount that I learned from that guy. <laughs> and his rubs were completely different than any anybody ever had any of John Williams rubs. They're awesome. Uh, he likes to use cinnamon and you, accent you before smell it's done. This stuff yes. and it, <laughs> you open up the, the cap on that rub and you smell it and you're like, Oh my God, it bowls you over. And you, and then you're like, this is the most bizarre tasting rub I've ever tasted in my life. It tastes like salt and vinegar chips. It tastes like, it tastes like it belongs on something that's not barbecue. And then you put it on your meat and you, cook your meat and you're like oh my god this is and it just like completely opened your mind up mm-hmm. that's like simply you, marvelous for me yeah. the simply marvelous rubs they, they do that to me they're like whoa and like, you're tasting like oh wow that's really good yeah. same kind same concept yeah right. simply marvelous i mean um he, that guy does an incredible rub i love his rub i haven't used it in, in forever i don't you know i haven't had his stuff in a long time but his uh his rubs are tremendous i love the flavor profiles um, and Heath Riles rubs are incredible. I mean, he has like a dozen different kinds of flavors of rubs. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. You know, pecan and cherry and apple and God knows what. Really All good sorts stuff. of fun stuff. Bath you know, um, and, uh, <laughs> but you know, my rubs, and I'm trying, I'm not try, trying to put flavorings in my rubs. I want them to be true to form with, with, you know, I want the flavor to come from the meat. And, um, and there's some teams. Yeah, I've been sponsoring some teams out there in the competition circuit. And I didn't design these rubs and these products for competition. The competition scene is a very fickle scene. 
If you're winning, everybody wants your rub and your sock. If you're not, you're yesterday's news. I don't want that. I don't. I, 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 I don't want that sort of ebb and flow of tide of of, of business level, depending on you know if I'm winning contests or not. Uh, I want to appeal to everybody, and that's kind of the market that I've gone after with my product and my classes. And it's been successful thus far. I really wanted to say a cluck yeah. and awesome dad joke there, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> I stopped myself. I want the what, world to what know. Was it, what was the joke? I was just gonna say that's cluck and awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. all. It's all. It's cluck and awesome. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I love that name. Right. It's the best. Yeah. Well, Thank cool. You. Well, yeah. I get a lot. I, I get a lot of. I let get a lot of comments about the name, you know. And I just wanted it to be, you know, I want it to be serious, but it's, mm. it, you know, it's not. It's, but it's still, you know, I want it to be fun, but it's, you know. That's, you can't take it too seriously. Well, it's well done. Yeah, it's really super yeah. well done. And like I said, you guys can get, if you guys are listening, go to sugarsbarbecue.com. Uh, it's barbecue spelled out. And uh, look at those. Yeah, so, yeah, all, all the way. So it's, yeah, B-A-R-B-E-C-U-E. It's not B-E-B-Q. That's somebody else. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and check it I out. Check it, and if you're, if yeah. you're there... Around that area, take one of those classes. And if yeah, you guys are sure. close, I'm, I actually might drive up. I'm just really thinking. I might go that. with you. Let's do it for real. That may you know, dude, that you, may guys, you guys need to come out. Let's do it I would real. love to have you guys out yeah. here. Yeah. I would love to come. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've spun that one with all the media. I'm like, what? <laughs> so we'll think about that. But yeah. well, Lenny, we appreciate you coming on and, and chatting with us. It's been yeah. awesome. It was super awesome. Yeah. I appreciate you having me Thank on. You. you guys are, you guys are a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And you have a really good show. Uh, I've been listening to, I've made it to uh, like half of all your podcasts and there are a lot of, they're really interesting and I love the format and you guys are doing a great job and I really appreciate the time. Thank well, you. Thanks. And Hey, uh, you guys, like I said, sugars, barbecue.com, take a class, check it out. That's really cool. If you guys haven't watched any of the shows that she's on, watch them, especially barbecue brawl. That's a good one. Right. Rewatch that one if you can. All right. Well, thanks Lene and you have a good one. We'll talk to you soon. Thank, thank you so much. I, I, uh, I appreciate it. Thanks guys. You too. Hey guys, that was the interview with Lene from Sugar's Barbecue. Um, again, just follow us on all of the, the platforms if you'd like to. Go yeah. to pitmasterspodcast.com and you can find out everything you need to know there. Yep. Um, Make sure you hit up her classes. She has a lot of classes. Make sure you get on those. Do, yeah. And there's yeah. some cool ones. I mean, right. like we talked about, but she has some really cool classes. There's, yeah. there's something for everyone up there. And if you're close by, it, it might be worth it. I'm still considering going up to one. And, uh, doing that so I, they look great but yep. look out for she was in arizona like i said like i said she did the arizona thing so yeah. look for that she might be around your area yeah but order her uh go to sugarsbarbecue.com and check out her stuff and uh yeah man cool yep all right well hey guys thanks again for tuning into the pitmasters podcast and we'll see you soon